The state of Alabama is divided into seven congressional districts. The one outlined in red is the seventh. It's the only district in which the majority of the people who live there are black. In 2020, when the United States collected census data, the number of African Americans living in Alabama had increased. Meanwhile, the number of white people living in Alabama decreased. And yet, when Republicans in Alabama updated their congressional maps based on the new census data, they didn't account for the change. Under the new Alabama maps, the state would still only have one majority black congressional district out of seven, despite the fact that roughly one quarter of Alabama residents are black. Now, the new maps were subsequently challenged in court, and a three-judge panel ruled that the new Alabama congressional maps violated the Voting Rights Act. And to fix it, Alabama would need to redraw the lines to create a second majority black congressional district. State of Alabama appealed that ruling to the Supreme Court, asking the Supreme Court to put a halt on the lower court's mandate that they add a second majority black district. And today, the Supreme Court did that. In a 5-4 to four ruling, the Supreme Court reinstated the old Alabama congressional map, the one with just one majority black district. They essentially put that lower court ruling on ice until the full case can be heard before the Supreme Court. However, that's not going to happen, probably, until the fall, which means for now, all el- elections in Alabama will be held according to the old map. The ruling has the potential to erode voting rights, not just in Alabama, but it could have lasting implications for the entire country. Joining us now is Janae Nelson, the associate director uh, and counsel of the NAACP Legal Defense and Education Fund, which is representing the plaintiff that brought this case. Ms. Nelson, thank you for being with us this evening. This is a bit of a liars and a truth tellers thing because the the, the Supreme Court, um, in uh, Justice Kavanaugh's opinion on this, suggests that they are acting in the interests of the citizens and the voters of Alabama by not allowing changes to the maps, uh, as they say, too close to an election. Tell me what's wrong with that argument. There's a lot wrong with that argument. It allows a map to stay in place that a three-judge federal court found to be discriminatory against Black Alabamians. We at the Legal Defense Fund represent, along with our co-counsel, the National and State ACLU, We represent individuals and Black organizations in Alabama that have filed a lawsuit under the Voting Rights Act alleging that the new map that you just displayed is a dilution of Black voting power. And we went through an entire seven-day hearing with 17 witnesses, with a panel of judges, two of whom were Trump appointees. That means the majority of the panel were Trump appointees. And they, after hearing the record evidence, decided in a 225-page decision that the map that you displayed on the screen was racially discriminatory, that it did not reflect the population shift in the 2020 census, that it did not reflect the state's ability to draw a second district that would enable Black Alabamians to elect candidates of choice. That is a violation of the Voting Rights Act. It's clear the record supported that, and a district court saw fit to enjoin the implementation of those maps. Unfortunately, the state of Alabama petitioned the Supreme Court to stay that injunction, and the Supreme Court, based on a principle, not even actual law and precedent, but on a principle that was articulated in a case out of 2006 called Purcell, the court, in in a concurring opinion, we only have the concurring opinion to give us some sense of the court's thinking and reasoning on this, decided that allowing the maps to be redrawn within seven weeks of the the earliest date of the kickoff of the election would somehow be disruptive and violate a principle that, as I said, is not in fact law, but is a notion that has come to govern election law cases in the past several years. So we are deeply disappointed that the court erected this barrier, this barricade to voting rights and to political participation for Black Alabamians, the upshot is that this doesn't conclude our work, not not by any stretch. We will continue to litigate this on the merits, and that same record that allowed us to win before the district court 
should, if law is just, allow us to win before the Supreme Court. Which means you will, you will, you will go, you will argue it before the Supreme Court. It, it will, it will be a real case. Is there, is there some sense, though, given the way the Supreme Court has been acting? And I should point out, the Chief Justice uh, voted with the minority um, today against the the decision that was uh, that was taken. Is there some sense that things will change because people make because people like you make a, a better argument? We can only hope that that's the case. We can only hope that the Supreme Court is still a court that follows the rule of law, that when presented with a decision that is well-reasoned, that is thorough as the one that we received is, the 225-page decision from a court that heard seven days of evidence and spoke to 17 witnesses and evaluated all of the evidence with deliberation, unlike what the court did here, where it decided this on its shadow docket without any arguments on the briefs. When the Supreme Court finally gives this case a full hearing, which Black Alabamians and every person in this country deserves, we expect that the court will do the right thing and, and recognize that this is a clear and blatant violation of the Voting Rights Act.